Much like Wells rushed the protagonist out of the ship using the escape pod, I decided to rush out this video on the Outer Worlds, a single player RPG title that plays very much like Skyrim or Fallout 3. My reason for this is the Epic Games Store. On their main page, it hints that the title will be made available for free, starting from Thursday, April 4, until the next Thursday, April 11. So, since you can get the game for free, then maybe you should give it a go. Now, you might be thinking, but I don't have a GTX 1060, nor an RX 590, and my CPU is not a 6th Gen i7. No worries, as we'll show with this video, the game will run on somewhat older hardware. I selected the following video cards to test this. The R9290X, the fastest card that I own in the R9 lineup, that also happens to work pretty good as a 4GB VRAM equipped hair dryer. The R9280, a hand-me-down card that is a bit slower and sports only 3GB of VRAM. And the R9270, this one is represented by the Gigabyte PCB and Asus Cooler crossbreed. As for the test platform... Surprise! Not. It's the Z230 workstation from HP, sporting a 4th Gen i7 equivalent CPU, with 32GB of DDR3 running at 1600MHz in dual channel. Since we are under the minimum requirements, I opted for low settings and the expected 3 resolutions. 1080, 1600 by 900 and 720. At 1080 resolution, the R9290X leads the pack by a comfortable margin, at 59 FPS on average and 32 FPS 41% toes. This last metric seems to be more relevant for all the large open areas in between settlements. Fortunately, the game feels fine even in those cases with the Hawaii-based card. Tahiti, the GPU that powers the R9 to 80, manages 29 FPS for the same 1% metric and 41 FPS for the average. The game is still playable, but I'd rather get a few extra FPS and we'll see if lowering the resolution will help. As for the R9 to 70, nope. Sorry, the game at this resolution is playable only if the protagonist stays inside buildings. A drop in resolution to 1600 by 900 should increase the performance, at least according to conventional wisdom. The R9270 however ignores that and the values for the average and 1% lows barely increase by 4 and 1 FPS respectively. The R9280 also seems oblivious to the almost 31% reduction in pixel count and offers the same 4 FPS increase for the average. Now, while this hints at a CPU bottleneck, both the average usage percentages for the CPU, of less than 50%, and the result offered by the r 9 x claim otherwise. Indeed, the hair dryer runs an average of 77 FPS, 18 more than at 1080, and provides 44 FPS for the 1% lows, 12 more than previously. 1280 by 720 is my last ditch attempt to get playable frame rates from the Gigasus R9 to 70, but the card still refuses to play nicely. 29 FPS for the average and 11 41% lows. The R9 to 80 finally gets a meaningful performance increase, averaging 57 FPS and providing 37 41% lows. While not double the values at 1080, it's a good 16 FPS more for the average and 18 more 41% lows. As for the R9 to 90X, the numbers increase to 85 FPS for the average and 47 41% lows. Throughout the tests, it was the R9 to 90X that managed to drive the CPU usage percentage to the high 80s, and the fact that the FPS kept increasing suggests that the requirement for a 6th Gen i7 is a bit conservative. A 4th Gen i7 will probably do just fine. I like that the R9 to 80 can still play the game, and while I have no problems with 30 FPS, there is a pretty good chance that the frame rate will suffer in more demanding scenarios, so I'd play the game at 720 resolution just to be safe, or at 1600 by 900 if I feel more adventurous. The performance of the Pitcairn GPU, however, has me a bit worried. I intended to give its smaller sibling, the R7265, a go at this game. I also wanted to test the Bonaire GPUs, but I'm not so sure right now. Anyway, the game is free, or it's going to be, so go get it. As for this video, well, we're done. Thank you for watching, I hope you liked it, and I'll see you for the...